All right, well, I'm gonna share my screen here. Everybody see that okay? Yeah, yeah cool. I'm gonna minimize this thing for myself, great. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, today I wanted to, thought we could maybe talk about some modeling uh, freeform modeling, specifically uh, the subdivision tool, those a couple of other things. And um, so I have a little vignette prepared. Uh, and of course we can, you know, go off script. That's, that's not a problem. Uh, and so um, since we're focusing mostly on the subdivision tool, uh, I thought I'd start with some techniques here. So the first thing that I've done, as you can see, is I've laid out a very simple-minded way, uh, some arcs and circles uh, that are tangential to each other. And uh, the idea here is to model a swimming pool, which, you know, in architecture, <clears throat> unless you do some really kind of a, a gourmet uh, kind of work, uh, probably not a lot of call for subdivision modeling, but um, perhaps swimming pools might be something that, that uh, would be something that you would use it for. So I thought I would uh, use that. And uh, along the way, I discovered uh, some uh, things that the subdivision tool won't do. And so I have to find some uh, ways to accommodate that. So imagine this is a, a swimming pool layout for something a little more organic than just a, a rectangular pool, obviously. And I've just I've just drafted it um, in. Uh, yeah, I did know that. Thank you. I just drafted it in two D, very simple. Uh, did some tangents and so forth. Um, and uh, let's see. Why do I have this? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, bear with me a little bit. So once I've got this sort of, uh, you know, basic uh, outline here that I've just that I've just selected and I'm dragging off, right? Uh, what I really want to do is I want to create what's called a, a cage. So if you think about these curves, right? Uh, those curves are tangential. There are lines that are that are tangential to those curves, and vice versa. And so what I want to do is I want to develop a, a polygonal solid that the ultimate curve geometry of my subdivision uh, is going to be tangential to. And so that's what I've done here. I've started with the setters of these various um, uh, arcs. So here we've got this, uh, well, there's a, uh, 45 foot radius arc over here. So I've got this line is perpendicular to that tangent. So I've drawn it from the center of the arc, right? And then I've drawn this line from the center of this circle and drawn a perpendicular to it to derive this tangent and so on. So by doing that, I've developed these three uh, tangent lines that are beginning to describe a polygon, right? So if I, um, if I mirror those three lines and then, you know, trace it with a polygon, Like that, right? So you can see where that that shape is uh, this this uh, two dimensional representation of a prismatic solid that's that's per, that is sort of tangential to all these curved lines. Okay, great. So um, so that's that's what I'm doing here in this two D construction. Um, and so what I, what I ultimately develop here is this extrusion that I made. You can see the kind of the 2D uh, outline of the pool 
shape that I want. And if I just go ahead and render that and shade it, right, you can see um, here's here's just an extrusion. Uh, here's just an extrusion of that of that polygon. It might not be totally clear why I'm doing all of this, but but hopefully it'll become clear soon. So um, so then because the pool you know doesn't have a uniform depth, it's got a shallow end, it's got a deep end. I've created this other rotated rectangle and extruded it and snapped it to this corner over here, right? Uh, in order to ultimately derive um, something like this. So I'll take these two solids, there we go, and uh, subtract solids. Right. And so now I, I have this shape here. And it has no fill, let's give it a fill so you can see it a little bit better. And so in essence, this is going to be uh, the bounding polygon for my subdivision. So let's talk about subdivisions before we go any further. I'm gonna pull open my uh, 3D modeling um, menu here. And uh, you can see that there's a, an edit subdivision tool. If I, there is no create subdivision tool per se, um, but if I just double click on the edit subdivision, uh, then you'll get this dialog box. And I think this is probably how most people approach a subdivision, right? They'll often start with a sphere, um, perhaps some other shapes, but spheres are, are kind of easy to deal with. And uh, I might, you know, center it in space someplace. And now I've got this sphere. And you can see that um, if I just use the selection tool and click on it, and then highlight the edit subdivision tool, I've got this bounding wireframe. And um, so that, that is the so-called subdivision cage. And I can either edit the faces or edit the edges or edit the vertices. And we'll talk about that at greater length. And so the typical methodology is to, or a common methodology is to start with a sphere, for example, and then uh, just you know, kind of deform it, like what I'm doing here, right? And as you can imagine, that gives you this very, very plastic um, sort of thing, right? That you can play with, and you can create some really nice um, curvy blobs. But if my goal is to get back to something that is um, sort of dimensionable, rational, something that someone can reproduce. This, this shape over here is gonna give me maybe a satisfying sculpture, but it is really, really free form. And it's very difficult to go back and, um, and rationalize that in a way, uh, if, I'm, if my ultimate goal is to produce construction documents or something constructible, then um, this could be kind of challenging to deal with. So when the subdivision tool first appeared in Vectorworks, um, and this is um, a modeling tool that um, was developed initially by Pixar, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this was the way to go. You could uh, just create a subdivision and start editing away. But um, in the uh, second or third iteration of, of subdivision, we got this really uh, nice sort of feature. Let me go back, and that is that I can I can take this. Sorry, I can uh, I can take this solid, and under the uh, modify menu, convert. I can convert that solid to a subdivision, and that doesn't create a reproduction of that solid as a subdivision, what it does is it treats that solid as the cage that the subdivision is tangential to. So if I just create convert to subdivision, right, then I get this blob, this nice sort of sculptural shape. And you can see that it, it bears a relationship to the 
solid that I had before. In fact, let me go ahead and just duplicate that solid and then go back and uh, convert one of them to a subdivision. The subdivision iteration has to do with the number of uh, the, the uh, degree of curvature um, of the surface. So there's, there's one degree of curvature and uh, I could go to zero degrees of curvature, in which case I just get a solid that looks just like the cage, which I'm not particularly interested in. Um, duplicate that, modify, and uh, convert that to subdivision and say two degrees of curvature, right? So let's just, I'm just gonna go with the three. There it is. Okay. Uh, and, and now if I make this with no fill, you can see the relationship between the subdivision and the prism that I first generated from. And in fact, if I, uh, hit the edit subdivision tool and activate that subdivision, you can see that the cage, those defined by these little black handle points, corresponds exactly to the prismatic solid that I generated. All right, let me just take a quick pause here and make sure that everybody follows me so far. Maybe since I've sort of jumped in the middle of it, maybe you have some, some questions. Any, any questions from anybody? Hey, Francois, well, I just want to commend you for a very clear explanation thus far. And also, I love that you called out the folly of making sculptural objects, but then what to do with them. I think yeah. that's what I've wrestled with since this first came out. I even pre I've presented on this many times about the subdivision and just kind of making these fun blobs. And then I go back to work after that and actually make real things. So yeah. I'm really yeah. intrigued by where you're going with this. So thank you. OK, cool. Sure, sure. All right. Um, yeah, so that's that is in fact that is in fact it. So, so now that we've got this subdivision, let me go over to my to my next phase. Actually, I'll just stick here. I'm I'm right here. So once I have this, uh, let me get rid of the cage or the the initial poly uh, polygon or uh, yeah uh, polygonal prism that I generated from. So I'm going to double click on this and I act automatically get the edit subdivision tool. So now that I've got this initial blob, right? It 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 would be it's still difficult to dimension, but I I can start doing some things with it. So um, so the first temptation is to mess with the transform tool, which is the the first tool here. And and I'm I'm not going to get into every nuance of the edit subdivision tool, but I'm just going to try to hit the highlights. So with this transform tool, right? What I can do is I can grab either point or an edge or a face. And I'm actually gonna resist the temptation to play with those right now. I'm gonna get back to them in a, in a minute. Um, but uh, you can see that when I, when I grab one of these tools, um, I get this uh, little green, red, blue object, which is uh, called the dragger. And I can grab any of these arrows and drag in that direction so I can deform the, the subdivision that way, right? Uh, or I can use one of these arcs and I can then rotate, uh, which in, in this case, that's not doing very much if I'm rotating this way. But if I say grab this guy and start rotating, you can see how I'm like twisting the subdivision. So again, like to, to Jacob's point, like, yeah, you can make some really cool sort of shapes with that, but you know, now what? So uh, let's see, let me undo. That, that was actually your point, Francois. I was just reiterating that. <laughs> yeah, okay. You're, you're certainly enlightening, enlightening me for, I'm like, hey, let's, who wants to start a pool business? Like, <laughs> this looks really <laughs> cool, you know? All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna play actually with this next tool. Um, and this is the crease mode of the, 
of the, it's the same tool, crease mode of the subdivision tool. And what that allows you to do is click on one of these edges and create a crease. So I'm just gonna click on that edge and you're immediately gonna see what's gonna happen, right? It, um, it starts to create this sort of ridge, right? This kind of uh, here. So let me go back to my tool. I'm just gonna go around and as I go around, I'm I'm creasing this. So if you're familiar with uh, with Bezier's, right? This is sort of analogous to uh, converting the the edge of a polyline to a straight line segment, only in three dimensions. So, hey, look at this. I've got this nice flat top to my uh, subdivision. Let me deselect it so you can see it. I mean, it is nice and flat. And suddenly that's starting to look sort of believable as um, a swimming pool or something like it. So in fact, that's, that's what I have over here. And uh, now that I have this nice creased edge, now I can double click on that and I can go back to my transform mode right, uh, this first mode. And uh, I've left, I've kept my initial poly line, which you'll remember from my very first slide. That's, that's basically this shape that I described over here. So, whoops, uh, I've kept that as a kind of a guide. And so now I'm gonna double click on this and uh, I'm gonna grab the transform mode and um, this isn't going to be perfect, but it's going to be, you know, not bad. Uh, so I'm going to, you can see that the dragger on this edge has a blue and a red. Again, the red is vertical, the blue is along the axis, and the green is perpendicular to that edge. So I want the green, and I'm going to start dragging it uh, until I'm just about touching that green uh, line, which is the defining boundary of my pool shape that I want. Now notice that the heads up display is giving me a value here, right? And I can drag my, you can see from the, the red dot that is following my cursor, I can drag my mouse up or down or side to side. And because I selected what is now highlighted as the yellow arrow of the dragger, I am constrained um, to just drag this edge in that particular direction, which is really kind of nice. And so you can see that I am getting a distance here of about nine inches or so, nine, nine and a half inches. Now I can't, I can't snap to this uh, green edge, right? I'm, I'm still approximating, but now I'm just gonna type nine, you can see that on screen and hit return. And now that dragger has, moved that uh, tangent edge exactly nine inches from where it was before. Because, you know, I love symmetry, I'm now gonna grab this edge and grab this arrowhead and start dragging and I'll type nine again, right? And so then I can grab uh, this edge and I can drag and I can say, oh yeah, I need to drag about six inches. So I'll type six and then I'll take its, its analog and I'll drag six inches and um, so on. So I'm going around and I'm trying to fit this very sculptural shape to this rationally drafted um, polyline, right? It's, it's not perfect. Um, uh, again, I'm not snapping to it, so it's an approximation. Um, but after a while of sort of reshaping it, I, I, I can get reasonably close. And uh, if I spent a lot more time, I could probably get even closer. And again, I could take this, this point right here, right? And I could even... Um, this is kind of tricky, so let me go around to the other end here. So I could grab this point and I could rotate so that I'm in line here, probably 30 degrees, right? See how I've been very 
you know, I'm using the heads up display to, to do this in a very rational manner. And then um, minus three inches, say. So I can go around and really get a pretty close fit to this um, polyline. Uh, honestly, probably a closer fit than the uh, than I suspect the the uh, the pool uh, contractor is going to do with with gunite. I got a. Uh, uh, be able to, to get fairly precise. Francois? Yeah. Uh, so uh, you really need to do this in 3D, right? Not in, in a top plan, you know, so you could see if you're able to do uh, uh, Don, I'm having trouble hearing you. You're, you're real muddy. You said something about doing this in 3D and not top plan. Sorry. Let's try this. So um, can you hear me better now? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Thank okay, you. Okay, sorry. Uh, I forgot my laptop has the um, microphone. So uh, it, it, this really needs to be done in 3D by eyeballing it as opposed to something more precise in top plan view. Yeah, I mean, I can work in top plan if I want, um, certainly, but it's really challenging to know like which one of these am I grabbing? And I can certainly go to my front view, right? But it's actually helpful to do this in 3D. And, and you're in the sense, and I am eyeballing it in the sense that I'm approximating it by dragging, right? And then I'm reading uh, some irrational distance on the heads up display, right? And then I'm rationalizing that. And then right. I'm just gonna do the exact same dimension on the other side so that my symmetrical shape stays symmetrical. Got it. Okay, thanks. So that's, but that's basically the procedure. Again, um, it's, I'm not snapping, so it's this is not this is not um, caliper level precision, but we're talking about a pool <laughs> and right. gunite and and a you know and a backhoe. So uh, it's it's an appropriate level of precision for the for the task that's uh, that's being that's being required. Okay, so 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 once I've reshaped the top here, right? Um, I'm gonna want the the bottom to actually you know taper down as well and so that's what i've done in this in this next sort of iteration is i've just taken you know i was messing around with the top i've just taken the bottom because any one of these uh any one of these draggers is 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 fair game and so i can just take these and and make the pool as you know the sides as steep or as shallow as i as i want um, and so ultimately I'm just moving around from point to point and you can see why, you know, having a, a tractable number of points, even with, you know, I've got what, um, six on top and six on the bottom, uh, with 12 points and however many edges that corresponds to, um, that, that's still a fair amount of fiddling around that I can, uh, play with in order to get uh, a pretty good shape. So. Um, so then, uh, at, at some point I'm going to be pretty happy with, with this, um, shape and what I'm going to want to do is create the actual thickness of the, of the pool itself. So what I haven't told you is, is that what I've really been working on here is not the shape of the pool, but the shape of the water. Um, and there's a, there's a good reason for that is that I'm going to use the shell command. So uh, what my shell ends up looking like is something like this. And the way that I, that I get there is that I will, I will take this, uh, this subdivision and let's go ahead and activate my clip cube view here. And uh, I'll go ahead and deselect that. There we go. And so I have a, I have an issue with the subdivision, which is that it is not a solid, it's all surfaces. So I'm gonna to have to deal with that later. Uh, but for now, in order to make a shell, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my uh, edit subdivision tool and I'm gonna to go to this mode over, do, 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 here it is, the face hole mode, which is the fourth. And I'm just gonna click on this guy and that guy, because you know, there's two of them. 
for this top surface. And you can see that I now have this very, very thin object. And uh, it looks like it's just ripe for the shelling. So let's go to our three back to our 3D modeling menu and uh, go to shell solid and we'll give that a thickness of about 12 and we'll go to settings and make it outside and then i'll just uh, click on the subdivision and hit okay and whoop shell creation failed because subdivision is not actually a shape that can be shelled so um so oh, that is I'm yeah sorry to bother you but I looked away for just a second and you did something to create this open bowl. Yeah. But, and I didn't see what you did. Could you just tell, yeah, just what did you do to do that, please? Yeah, yeah. So in the, in, I just double clicked on it and in the subdivision tool, yeah. right, the fourth mode over here, uh, I'm sorry, the fourth, uh, one, two, three, four, fifth mode over here is the face hole mode. So I clicked on that and I can actually click on any of these uh, faces and make them open. Got it. Thank you. That's, but I just made the top open. Yep. Um, so I can't shell this, uh, but what I can do is I can go and I can convert this to uh, NURBS. So at this point, this, um, this, particular shape because I'm going to go back and I'm going to use it for the water that that rests, you know, that fills the pool. Um, this particular shape is uh, something that I want to keep. So, uh, so what I actually want to do is I don't want to convert the subdivision itself to a NURB. Uh, I want to convert a copy of it to the NURB, right? So, so keep the subdivision uh, off to the side on another layer or in another file or, or whatnot. And then once I have this, this NURB, then you can see that I'm able to shell it. Now, um, the, the NURB surface has curvature in two dimensions. And so if I, if I go back to this, all right, and I try to shell this, where are we? Here we go. And um, well, that's a group, so I'll ungroup it. And I try to shell this and I hold down, say the shift key and do um, multiples, right? I'm gonna get some failure. So what I need to do is I need to shell these, um, whoops, lost my shell. Shell these one at a time. And, uh, and that's what I've proceeded to do um, in order to create this, this shell. And if you think about it, right, wherever there's a seam, there's gonna be these two shells and they're actually gonna overlap slightly and that, that's okay. So- um, Francois? Yeah. Is there a, before you took the lid off of this and started shelling it with the lid off, I thought I saw you shell the the shape that had the lid still on it. Now I'm wondering why you took the lid off, converted it to a uh, a NURBS, and then started to shell, and then converted that to something else, I guess, or converted it to a NURBS and then started shelling. Or maybe I missed it. I, yeah, I can't it. shell a subdivision. That's oh, just I, a, I see. Okay, got it, it. Doesn't work. Got it. Um, okay. And and in fact, if you look if you look in in the help, it'll it, Vectorworks is quite clear about what 3D operations do and don't work on subdivisions. Okay. They're kind of their own animal. So you just have right. to get to NURBS somehow to do this. Exactly. So, got exactly. it. Thank you. Okay. I'm exactly. going back on you. So, yeah, yeah. So, so I've got this, so I've got this shell and, um, and that, that works pretty nicely. Now I've got a shaded rendering here. So it's, you know, it's not much to look at. It looks a little faceted, but that's not a function of the, of the uh, shell, that's just my rendering. So if I go to uh, view and uh, shaded options and go to say, hi, right, you'll see this is actually you know, quite, quite smooth. And again, I was a little sloppy as to how I was tracing over here. You can see that I'm not perfectly following 
the curvature of my green guide and um, uh, you know, I just kind of got it close enough to do this demonstration and stopped it and left it at that. So I've got this shell and it's actually a series of objects and that's okay. I can, uh, if it's important to me, I can try to add solids or, or whatnot. Um, so my, my next, uh, my next uh, task is to create a coping, right? And, and that's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just gonna draw a uh, profile. Uh, let's say make it 14 inches by, I don't know, three inches, whatever. And I will go ahead and select my path and the profile. And um, under model, I'll extrude along path. And I'll get something like that. Um, so I actually fix that in the next, um, in the next view here. If I double click on this object, you can see that I can um, select either the path or the profile. And what I've done with the profile is uh, there's the that locus there. That's the insertion. So that is. Uh, in essence, the path in section as it's passing as this profile is being swept around and extruded along that path. And so I've got it overlapping by a couple of inches to the inside of the path and about 12 inches to the outside of the path so that I get I get this situation. And along the way, I created some classes for myself. So I've got, you know, I've got the pool in, in one class and uh, the coping in another. Uh, so again, the extrude along path, completely independent of the, of the subdivision. Um, so uh, at a certain point, I'm gonna wanna get some water in here. So I've got a, uh, I've got a solid, that's, you know, this over here, that's my original subdivision. And then uh, what I did is I just created this rectangle and extruded it and I just lowered it by about six inches. So I'm just gonna, just gonna uh, subtract solids. And uh, you can see that I have uh, sort of taken the top six inches off of this. So the water level is, is down below the level of the shell, right? That makes sense. And um, I can go ahead and put that in my um, water class, which I can give a texture or not. But you'll notice uh, again because it's a because it's a solid subtraction that contains a subdivision. If I uh, if I section through that, you can see that the water is not rendering as a solid mass of water, right? It's it's rendering as a you know kind of a, a little shell. Uh, so what I need to do. Uh, in that case is a um, couple of things that I tried. Um, let me go ahead and, and uh, one thing that I, that I tried with this is um, I figured, well, if it's, if it's not rendering solid and I want it to be solid, right, then maybe I could try converting it to a generic solid because that's a solid and I can do that. Um, and you can see that when I converted it to a generic solid, nothing happened, right? It looks exactly the same. So then I thought, well, okay, let's, uh, let's convert that to a mesh. That's another kind of 3D object, right? And meshes are usually uh, renderous solids. 
And uh, once again, I, I struck out. And so I've got to, I've got to credit uh, Pat Stanford. Uh, and uh, Pat gave me a, a very useful tip, which is first convert it to a mesh and then convert it to a generic solid. Or is that the other way around? Can't be the other way around. Let's see. Do that. What do we have here? Solid subtraction. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Right, so well, is it going to affect it if the subdivision still has a face hole applied to the top? No. I don't think so. I mean, this one doesn't, right? Because this okay. is the this is the water, not the it came before. So, right. right, right. So, so I'm going to go to the subdivision that's inside of the subtraction here, and uh, convert that to a. I think the order is mesh, and then um, generic solid. There we go. So you can see as soon as when I converted the mesh to a generic solid, now it's nice and solid. Oh, <laughs> my uh, order of subtraction that now became a more recent object than the subtracting and skimming the six inches off the top. So I just need to bring this rectangular prism uh, to front. No, really. Well, that was a nice hack. Uh, kudos to Pat Stanford, but also yeah, to yeah. you for doing it live because that's a little bit of a maze, but you got oh, there. Th there we go. Uh, I'm, I'm not selecting it. There we go. So now if I bring that to front, then hey, presto. So now um, if I turn my, my classes on, I still have this polygon with a solid. So now, as I'm as I'm sectioning through the pool, everything looks the way that it that it should. Right, and um, I'm I'm getting a slight sort of discrepancy here because it's just a, a shaded. It's a it's a quick rendering, but if I do a, a proper rendering style, then everything will look you know nice and nice and tight. Um, and then the, the last thing uh, that I needed to do was to um, extract this sort of uh, tile band right above the above the water line. And um, so what I did for that is uh, God, I'm trying to remember what I did with that. Um, a couple of ways of doing it. Let's go back to our shell. So, so now that I have this shell, I can go ahead and draw a rectangle, move it down, say six inches or four inches, whatever. Extrude it. <laughs> Might help if I gave it something other than extrusion of zero, right? And I'll just drag the extrusion. Let me go back to All right, so I've, I've got my nerves here and I can just take all of that and intersect surface. Oh, I didn't like that. So 
stuff. I know why that is. Nope. Doing the same thing over and over again. I know that I managed to, oh, maybe I'll do it this way. Francois, what if you, yeah. what if you pulled that down and just left the top six inches? Yeah. Oh, I was using surfaces. Uh, that's my problem. Thanks, well, could you restate what the intention was? Are you taking a depth of tile from the edge of the pool just above the water line? Yeah, above the water line, exactly. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking those NURB surfaces that are, let me go back to wireframe. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> So I'm taking I'm taking this uh, prism, which is you know the top six inches. I'm duplicating it, so I have multiple instances of it. And then I'm selecting the NURBS surface that I derive the shell from. And under model, I'm intersecting solids. Before, what I was doing is I was using intersect surface, like you know I had say a circle and a rectangle. These aren't surfaces; they're they're solids. And I'll duplicate this so that I have another instance of it under the model. I'll intersect solids, right? And I'll duplicate this again, intersect solids. So now I have this nice sort of band. And uh, because these are intersections of NURBS derived from sub, a subdivision, but not an actual subdivision, then I can go ahead and use the shell command, just like I did before, only this time, I'm gonna shell it about half an inch and uh, to the inside. So I'll just shell that one and I'll shell this one. And I'll show that one and so on and so forth. And you can see oh, that one it didn't like. I wonder why. Oh, that's weird. Hang on. Not sure why I didn't like that one because it worked for four. Anyway, so now I've got all these objects and I'll just put them in my um, tile class, which is off. So let's turn that on and render it. And I have a very boring tile for the tile class. So, you know, I can go in and fix that and uh, do, do something that's, that's more appropriate to a pool tile. And so in the end, what I end up with is something like this, except the water here is still not solid. So I'm gonna go back and fix that. Convert it to a mesh and then convert the mesh to a generic solid and then send it to back. Huh. What's going on here? Uh, this may be a group. Huh, interesting. I didn't like it that time. Well, I'll go back to my uh, 
just copy this guy and paste it in place. There we go. Uh, so there we go. I've got you know got different classes and textures for the different components. I've got tile. I've got coping. I've got a shell. Um, and again, all, all along, I'm going to want to have kept that um, initial subdivision off to the side in case I need to go back and tinker with it. And I really want to make sure that I got that right because, of course, once I've shelled everything and so forth, um, uh, it's not very editable. So the ability to uh, edit the subdivision with the dragger and so forth, if I decide, no, I, I need a shallower pool, I'm gonna to need to go back to that primitive and sort of backtrack and then and then move forward. Um, but that, that's the that's the basic idea. So if I ran through that a little quickly, any any questions? I think that was huge. This isn't a question. I just wanted to say that was great. And uh, I was like maybe many who are on this call uh, thinking that the subdivision tool started with a, with a sphere and then you, you did, you got these, you could make these nice shapes, but you couldn't really dimension them. Um, and you couldn't really control what you had very well, but um, I think your technique really goes a long way. Yeah, it might help to have a little pad of paper and jot down the dimensions that you're <laughs> that you're tracking everything, so that so that you remember what you're doing. Um, there's also a feature, by the way, with the subdivision tool. Um, let me go back to one of my. Uh, you know, there, there's a there's another feature of the tool which allows you to um, to mirror uh, your subdivision. So you can, I think the way it works is you select a face, there we go. And so you create this, uh, you create this subdivision. And so anything that you do to one face, uh, let's use the, the dragger. And now I'm dragging from the center of that face, right? Anything I do to, to one face, I can, it happens symmetrically to the to the other. Um, so, uh, you know, if you need to model a Nintendo controller, for example, this this might be the way to go. Or if you just wanted to model, you know, half your pool and uh, make sure that the other half was uh, symmetrical. So, so that's uh, that's kind of a nice little feature to help keep subdivisions nice and symmetrical. Um, and where did you get that mirror tool? It's 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 a mode of the subdivision tool. So Got it. Got so it. when you, mm -hmm. you click on the subdivision, it's uh, it's this last mode over here. I can oh, deselect yeah. it, mm -hmm. right? And now everything is independent. Once mm -hmm. I've done that, I think that's how that works. Yeah. So you can see now I'm just creasing one side, and and not the other. So so they it's lost that um, that sort of sort of linkage and now it just looks like a weird shoe insert um, anyway yeah that's the key start with your cage and go to your subdivision not the other way around it it seems like this tool might be one or two uh revs away from being uh precise enough to where you could actually do manufacturing from this Manufacture precision parts, uh, auto body parts, for instance, or uh, aeronautical parts. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, this—I assume this is how people do that kind of stuff. I mean, that is that is ultimately a sort of a sculptural thing, and and obviously symmetry is is important for things like auto bodies and uh, airfoils and so forth. So. Um, I'm assuming the same, and, may, and maybe uh, Katia, which I think is the used to be anyway the standard tool for aeronautics and even uh, uh, automobile design. Maybe it operates differently, but my suspicion is it's it's pretty similar, but with more uh, more uh, 
editing capabilities. Uh, yeah, yeah. Great. And Vectorworks for uh, pulling this into the Vectorworks uh, family of uh, tools for us to use. Uh, any other questions? Yes, Francois, one quick question, if I may. Sure. Um, now that I've seen where you're going with this, could you go back to the very, very first step where you had your tangents and your circles and you created that box around it and just kind of quickly explain where you got that from? Sure, sure. Well, I'm, um, I, so um, I just drew these two circles sort of fitting roughly a, a, a golden section, right? And I put them tangential to each other. So they're just touching. Um, and, uh, and then uh, I just drew a tangent arc to those two, and um, once I once I did that, uh, then I was able to derive uh, this shape, and uh, that that was pretty easy. That was just um, you know selecting these two circles and infilling, uh, holding down the shift key, and infilling over here. So now I get this this shape, um, but. Um, I drew from the center of each of these three arcs. I mean, I guess there's four, but um, uh, from the center of the three arcs, I drew these lines and then drew perpendiculars. So all of these orange lines are tangential to the curve. Now, obviously there's a certain degree of um, kind of decision-making on my part, right? Like I, I chose a 30 degree angle here for, for for this, but I could have just as easily drawn a tangent at that point, in which case I would have, you know, duplicated it, and rotated it left, and then, you know, snapped at the tangent over here. Uh, so, so there's a certain amount of, of discretion that I have in, in finding these tangent lines, because there's an infinite number of them. But once I get the three tangent lines, then I just mirror them about the axis. And um, that's how I, um, you know, derive this, this cage. So, Got it. thank you. Yep. Uh, so, so the cage, you know, basically the cage just starts with some very simple solid modeling operations, extrusions. Um, I drew a rectangle from that corner to this, Ooh, let's go. That's why I think that initial that initial two D drawing is really key to success with the subdivision. Is actually starting with that template, so to speak, reminds me of wood carving. You start with that block of wood and just draw the profile of what it is. You eventually want to whittle down. Um, yeah, that's effectively what you're doing there. Well, it's it's a it's a it's kind of an architectural approach, as I might say, rather than you know, say a like a sculptor probably wouldn't do that, right? A sculptor who was using this tool for a different purpose would just start with a blob and kind of play with it until they got a satisfying shape, which is you know that's fine too, not, not a problem with that. But um, yeah, so Harlan, so there there's uh, you know there's the cage, and then once I have that, then it's simply a matter of doing a uh, convert. I see. Thank you. Just I wasn't sure where we were going when you started. How this was going to yeah. end up? Yeah, I kind of started in the middle. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and so, why could I ask even the uh, the a simpler question than that? And that is, how did you get that tangent curve to be tangent to those two circles? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how did I do that? Uh, Al, I think what I did is um, I started, the way I often do that is I'll just start with an arc by three points and I'll kind of eyeball uh, an arc and I might sort of play with it and figure out sort of what radius I like, right? 
Um, in this case, what I ended up with was a, a 45 foot radius. Um, and then I used the fillet tool and I just use this first mode. So it's sort of the non-destructive fillet. It just adds a fillet without affecting the other objects and type a 45 degree, uh, foot radius. And then I just fill it, you know, from one to the other, depending on, you know, which way I'm going. I'm, you know, there you go. That was your, that was the fillet. Um, if you were giving this to a pool contractor, let's say, and you wanted to tell him like the depth of the pool and sort of the inverse topography, how would you do that? Would you do like section, uh, just cut sections and dimension those? Yeah, yeah. You, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah just, a just create a tool kind of thing where you actually get the lines and that kind of thing where they could really nail it. Yeah, yeah. So a couple of ways to do that. One, one would be if I let me go back to my shell. All right, I could um, I could <clears throat> use the um, under three D modeling. If I wanted to give it contours, I could create use the create contour tool and uh, specify a contour increment, say a twelve inch contour, and uh, just uh, draw a line horizontally. Right. And you can see that when I do that, it created all these contours for me. Oh. Sort of. Um, right. So, so that's one way. Or the, the other way is that I could simply, once I had this geometry, I could just start creating some viewports, plan viewports, section viewports, and just dimension them in, in section and plan and so forth. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, you know, could you use like the stake object if you just wanted to hit like several points or something like that? I like the contour uh, approach better for something like this because uh, otherwise I'm going to have to dimension the position of every single stake, right? I mean, I guess ultimately we'll, well have you know, to. When, when they do grading, you know, they put stakes out every so often, you know. And yeah. Not ever, you know. Every foot or whatever, um, you know, just give them something to work with, you know, a few, a few points. Yep. That might work too. You know, let's say if you're saying a drain or, I don't know, some step or something like that, you want to. Mm -hmm. nail in. Yeah, obviously, I haven't put in steps or anything here. And and I can get a lot more complex with this, with the model. Throw in a beach, get more detail, certainly. All right, thanks. Hi, right, you bet. All right, I think that pretty much covers um, the extent of my knowledge here. <laughs> Uh, John, thanks for the input on the SolidWorks. Um, appreciate that. Um, all right, everybody. Well, um, I guess I'll see everybody next month, and uh, I'll post this um, on YouTube as usual pretty soon. Thanks.